Hey guys, welcome back to my shop, Summit Auto Lab, here in Park City. Sal and I and Faith here, we uh, we got the Jeep Gladiator. This is the Stradman's Jeep Gladiator in um, for a vinyl wrap. So we went to pull out the Cayman so that we could clean the whole shop and get the shop prepped and ready to go. And the Cayman is completely dead, unfortunately. Um, another unfortunate part is that we're running behind schedule. So we need to start tearing into this Jeep Gladiator here and getting all of the components stripped off of the car so that the car is ready to be vinyl wrapped. And then later on our lunch break, we will try to fix the Cayman. So let's get to work. Here is the Stradman's Jeep Gladiator. As you can tell, it is glossy black, but it won't be for much longer. Um, also, it may look a little bit taller than stock and that is because it is lifted. James brought it to us pre-lifted, ready to go. It is still on the stock tires so it looks like it skipped leg day which is kind of funny uh, but we need to start stripping this thing apart we need to strip off the fenders here which includes these daytime running lights we need to strip off these uh, latches we need to strip off these vents everything off the car so that way each panel is completely bare we can reach all of the edges like underneath these rubber seals so we can wrap it properly and the longevity of the wrap will be there the wrap can last a few years so let's get stripping this thing apart so I have you guys down on a tripod right here on the Jeep Gladiator tailgate. Uh, Faith is removing the taillights while I'm gonna be grabbing some tools for the other stuff. Looks pretty cool without the lights. I kind of dig it. It looks like a skeleton. What do you think? All right, let's get this bread. After I get my tools. <laughs> Someone's not having fun. I am. Jeep has really stepped up their game. They've actually switched their door handles from like the, the push button one that was on the JKs to these that are kind of like a Euro style. They're kind of like the Volkswagen style where you have like this end cap and you pull straight out. These are the easiest door handles to remove. Basically, you open up the seal or the door jam. Sometimes there's like a little uh, button that you need to remove. But you see that little teeny hole right there? You just put in a T20 Torx. You slide that in there, you undo a screw until it really just won't unscrew anymore. And then you lift that little uh, end cap off the door handle and that slides right out. It's that easy. <laughs> Careful SpongeBob. Careful SpongeBob. Are you recording? Yes. <laughs> Should I be like vlogging? Yeah. Okay, you guys, we finally unbolted all the bolts that hold the door in. There we go. One door off. Boom. Three to go. Wow. It's very technical. I don't think I could have done that better myself. Probably not. making money moves over here. Right, Clayton? I guess. So I just ate really, really quick off camera so that I eat quicker so we could fix the Cayman. Um, I'm gonna leave the Jeep at this point right now until the Cayman is fixed. As the title suggests, the Cayman is completely dead. I'm not quite sure what's wrong with it, but I do have a hunch. Um, the door's still open, but literally nothing works. Like I can't open the front trunk, can't open the back trunk. I put the key in the ignition, literally nothing. So, uh, oh, the key is locked in there now. Um, so fingers crossed, I think it's just a battery. Fingers crossed it's not the alternator because I have no idea how to replace a Porsche Cayman alternator. But let's replace the battery and see if that does it. So if you don't have any power and your Porsche Cayman is dead, if you look right here next to the dead pedal, uh, it's pretty hard to see, but there is a box right here. You can pull it open and that is where all the fuses are. Let me get a flashlight. Just grabbed my phone right here so you guys can see there is the fuse box. And if you look at uh, that red tab right above those yellow, um, 
fuse pullers, that tab is actually a jumper tab. You wanna pull that red tab right out and that way we can get some power going in the system to open up the front trunk. Once I pull that tab out, I'm gonna need some power. So I have one of these like portable power bank uh, things. I just bought it, so hopefully it works. One of these. So I'm gonna hook this up to that tab and then probably like this bolt right here. That way uh, I can ground it on the negative right there and hopefully we get some power and I can pop the trunk open. Okay, so I pulled the red tab out right here. So I'm gonna connect the positive lead of the little jumper pack to there. And I'm gonna attach the negative one to that bolt I showed earlier. Press this on. Okay, we got the green light right there. So it should work in theory, let's see. Oh no, something's uh, something's not right. It's either my battery is like so dead that no electricity can flow through it or something else. So, um, so this technique right here works if the battery has like just not enough charge and it's still like a decent battery or whatever, but apparently my battery is not good or there's something more serious going on. Um, so I'll teach you guys how to manually, this is kind of like a, a bypass to get into the front trunk right here. Clearly didn't work. I'm gonna show you guys how to manually access the front trunk. Let me, there we go. So to access the front trunk manually, to get that thing to pop open, we need to remove this front driver wheel. And to do that, we need to get a jack under there, lift the jack up, get the wheel off, pull the wheel liner back a little bit, and then there's a cable back up in there that you just, you yank on it, and uh, it should pop the hood. So we gotta do that now, unfortunately. So it adds a little bit of time to the project. By the way, these wheels, not the tires, these tires are completely shot. You can kind of see right uh, right here, we got some, uh, some cord action going on. Anyways, these wheels right here are for sale in the state of Utah, if any of you are interested. They fit 911s, Caymans, Boxsters probably. Um, they're Roderick RW5s, I believe. And they're 19 inches by something, I don't know. If you're interested, shoot us a message. Okay, so the wheel is now off. You can kind of see the wheel liner here. It's two pieces. The cord is like directly behind here. So what I'm gonna do is undo this bolt, this bolt, and probably that bolt, just so I can pull this fender liner back a little bit and we can reach back and grab that cord. Now these are T25 torques. Okay, we got those bolts off. I got my flashlight here so you guys can actually see what's going on. If I pull this down like that, you should be able to see, do you guys see the cable that's like right there in the center of the screen? That is the cable that you want to pull. Like I said, it's right behind here. Um, it's kind of hard to pull with your fingers, so I have some vice grips here that I'm gonna clamp onto the, the cable and just kind of yank it. There we go, easy as that. Well now I just gotta button it all up, tuck this plastic back in, get the wheel back on, and then we'll be in the front trunk. Okay, finally, got in the front trunk here. So if you guys don't know where the battery is on a Porsche Cayman, it's underneath this front area right here. You just lift this plastic cover off, boom, there's the battery. So the first step in troubleshooting what is going on with my Cayman, I'm going to replace this battery. I just bought this uh, Duralast Platinum battery. I ended up going with the higher end battery just because I'll be running a lot more accessories to come. I also bought some new um, like terminal like accessory type things. Uh, there's more to come on that. But uh, we gotta pull this battery out, which requires me to get a 10 millimeter wrench to undo the battery terminals. I got that right there. And then I think it's like a 12 millimeter or something to undo like the battery tray holder doohickey like that. Oh. 
Okay, I got the two terminals off and I got the uh, battery tray holder thing. I'm gonna set that to the side. And then we're gonna pull this battery out. These batteries are really heavy. Okay, I got the new battery, which is even heavier. Oh my gosh. Oh, this battery's way heavy. Okay, the way these trays work, you have to like put the battery in over here and then slide it to the driver side. Um, first thing I gotta reinstall is the battery tray holder piece. Then we got the two terminals right there, the negative side right here. Right off the bat, you can see in that frame right there, the light turned on, that's a good, good sign. Okay, we'll crank these down. I just threw the cover back on, but before I shut the hood here, I definitely want to make sure the car can start. That way we don't have to pull the whole wheel off again and all that random jazz. Okay, so let's hop back in. I still got to clean up this whole mess right here. But right off the bat, it looks like... But right off the bat, it looks like we have power again, which is a good sign, a good sign for sure. Let's see if I put the key in. Oh, all right, the gauges start up. Let's see if we can get this thing to start. Hey, all right. A little cold start for you. Nice. Okay, well, I think that solved our problem. Let's double check, I lashed that, let's see if it'll open. Yes, 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 yes. Okay guys, luckily that project ended up being way more simple than it could have been. It could have been like an alternator or like some weird short out, something like that. I'm really glad it was just a battery. Thanks for watching this video guys. Faith and I gotta get back to work. We gotta continue to strip and disassemble this side of the car. Um, you can see I got like the door handles off and the mirror off, but uh, I need to like pull these um, bolts out, the hinges off, I gotta pull the doors off, and uh, we gotta get wrapping. The next video is going to be us wrapping this Gladiator. I'm gonna be posting that in the next day or two, so stay tuned for that, uh, but I will see you there.